Mr. Stranger. <laughs> die, monster, die. Die, monster, die? Don't tell me. <laughs> American International, 1967, starred Boris Karloff, Nick Adams, based on a story by H.P. Lovecraft. I got gotcha. you. It was 1965. Look it up. 67. A little louder, Toby. They can't quite hear you in Seattle. <sighs> My two children. <sighs> you missed. <laughs> well, it's Saturday morning, Tobe. Come on. You ought to be out getting some sun and scoping out the chicks. Maybe later. Not much to do since Polly moved, huh? Why do they have to move away at the beginning of the summer? Why couldn't they wait until school? I, uh, I guess they managed to sell their old house, though. I saw a moving truck down the street. A family with other kids? There's only one way to find out, Tobe. It was 1965. 67. 65? Man, my head feels like it's gonna bust. I don't get it. I meant to. More than one small fool has lost his life hiding under the wheels of a truck. <laughs> Bless you. Is this any kind of a book for a boy to read on a summer afternoon? I've got every issue. I read Dracula twice and Frankenstein once. And I bet I've seen every Hammer film at least six times. Ah, a student of midnight then. What? Midnight. Not 12 of the clock, but midnight. When twilight and dawn are evenly balanced, one no stronger than the other, each pulling against each other in the opposite direction so that the very fabric of the night can be torn apart. Midnight. When the monsters come out. What's your name, boy? Toby Michaels. I'm Emil Francis Bendixson. Listen to me, boy. You know nothing about monsters. N nor could you ever. My dad's read just about every book there is and seen just about every horror movie ever made. He's been collecting stuff since he was my age, and he's got a complete set of famous monsters and of Castle of Frankenstein. Is this a, an avocation you both share? Yeah, sure. He gave his collection to me. It's well, ours. Must be kind of nice sharing what you know. You like monsters too? Look at me, boy. I am a monster. A vampire. That's silly. Everybody knows vampires can't stand the purifying rays of the sun. If you were a vampire, you'd be hopping around, smoking, and turning to dust. Who said? Maybe he has grandkids, Tobe, did you ask? Mom, he's creepy. He scared me. He said... He said boo. Boo? It must be a psycho killer. Even worse, a psycho killer without grandkids. <laughs> Come on, Toby. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I really am. <laughs> oh, no, you're not going to get a summer cold now. Come on, Ace. The Crawling Eye is on Channel 6, DCA 1957. Uh. Toby, the milk, oh. please. Mm -hmm. Dad, 1958, starring Forrest Tucker. Oh. 
What's the matter? Are you okay? Uh, yeah. I must be getting old. Yes, this works after all. The undead! You've got the strength of the undead! There's nothing for you to be afraid of here, boy. You're gonna kill me and suck my blood and recruit me into the army of the night. Read Mark Twain, boy. Twain won't fill your head with garbage. Listen to me. Everything you think you know about vampires is rubbish. Cheap, secondhand myth. It's not like that at all. Believe me. Yeah, you're so fond of garlic. Come on, I'll take you to just the place. You're not eating any. It's the garlic. Boy, with my stomach, I'm lucky I can eat much of anything. There. You happy now? I'll bet you know hypnosis. I'll bet you made me think I saw you lift that car. I your mouth I was under a house. I suspect you've been under that house more than I've been in it. What was your little friend's name? Polly. You're living in Polly's house. My house now. Got any grandkids? I'm afraid I've been around too much for that. Africa, Asia, Europe, the Americas. A family and a home just weren't in the cards for me. So, like an aged elephant seeking the burial ground, I've come home to end my days. You're from Mill Valley. I was born here. I was a boy here. Nothing's the same, though. Except the cemetery. That's the only thing that hasn't been built over or torn down. <coughs> Excuse me. If I had had a... Grandson, he'd have been like you. You could have played together. I'm glad we can be friends, Mr. Bendixson. <laughs> Your head hurt? Yeah. How did you know? We'd better get along. Your parents might be worried. Mr. Brendixson? Thank <gasps> you. 
bitch. Well, 99.1. It's the flu. It's, you know, one of those Asian things. It's, it's a payback for Vietnam. Mrs. Biner has it. The whole Avery family has it. It's weird. It is weird. It's all within a four or five block radius. I don't know. It feels more like an allergy to me. Mm. Except allergies don't make your bones ache, and why would everybody be allergic to the same thing? Yeah. Well, you get some rack time and keep watching the skies. Night, sweetie. Night. Polly's house isn't the same as it was before, is it, boy? I tried to tell them, but the words wouldn't come out. I wanted to tell them. It would have served no purpose. It'll all be over soon. Getting close to the time now. So little time left. Come on. Come on, walk with me into the night, you and I. What's the matter? You afraid I'm going to bite you? <laughs> I don't need to do that anymore. Come on, come on. We're friends, aren't we? Yes. Step out into the night, then. Step out, and I'll show you something you've never seen before, something you could never find in all your old movies and magazines. Come on, come on. Please, Mr. Benningson, do we have to go in? Something I want to show you. Come on. You? You were buried here? It doesn't work that way, Toby. You don't really die. It's like a, an infection, a disease, a, a thirst. <laughs> it uh, prolongs your life, though, but at a cost. They never found my body, of course. Just an empty grave here. But uh, when I got changed, I started to move. I had to move, I soon found out. 147 years of moving. Always moving. It wears thin, Toby. But now I'm back. Home. I'm ready. What do you mean? I'm here to die, I told you that. No, but you are a... You can't die, Mr. Bendixson. Oh, of course I can. I mean, you're the undead. You'll live forever in the corridors of the night. Twain, Toby. Twain will save you. Toby, there are worse things in the night than me. Things so terrible that I have spent 147 years running from them. Things that wait and hide. And if one of my kind stays too long in a place, they come out. The real monsters, Toby. The real beasts. What monsters? What are you talking about, Mr. Bendixson? Where are they? What do you know about genetics? Mutants. I ask you a serious question, you give me giant ants. Recessive genes, Toby. A genetic safeguard to protect mankind from my kind. Here, I'll show you. Come on, come on, sit down. It's, it's... You see? It's like an allergy. It's in you, too. I still don't understand. It's just as well you don't understand. But that isn't why I brought you here. If I'd had a son, I could have shown him wonderful things, and secrets that only I know, gifts that only I could give. Please, Mr. Benningson, I don't want to see the real monsters. You don't think I'd drag you out here to show you something ugly, do you? Look. A gift for you. Lightning bugs. 
I discovered this as a boy. In all of Mill Valley, the only thing left of me. Now it's yours. Remember this, Toby. When everything else grows hazy, try to hold on to this good thing. your head feel now? Feels fuzzy. I'll take this. How about your shoulder? You know, it's both of them now. I mean, every joint in my body, it's like they're on fire. Is it bad for you? <laughs> Bless you. I think I'm gonna go take a hot bath. Maybe that'll help. Dad? Once midnight. Come on, Toby, you know that. Not midnight. I mean, midnight. In the middle of the night, when you're halfway between dusk and dawn. Well, it depends on the time of year. You know, sometimes it's a little after 12, sometimes a little before 12. You know, it's summer now, so the nights are shorter. I guess uh, a little after 12. Why? That's when the monsters come out. Bye-bye. That was Elizabeth from across the street. She wanted to borrow the hot water bottle. And Luke Halloran called her asking for pain pills. Robert, I want to go to the hospital. This isn't right. It's as if the entire block has gone wrong. Oh, my God, you're bleeding. Jill. Oh, my God. Jill, Toby, call 911. Last night, between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m., tragedy struck this quiet house in the 2300 block of Clarendon Avenue, when sole resident Emil Benderson was brutally murdered. Police are withholding many of the details. Poor man. He only moved in a few days ago. Said there was blood everywhere. Just can't believe we didn't hear anything. How could something like this happen in Mill Valley? You leave L.A., you leave San Francisco, and the crazies still find a way of catching up with you. Butchering some poor old guy. Luke, please. Toby had gotten to know Mr. Bendixson. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I didn't know his name. 
I'm just praying I can sleep tonight. I had such a time last night. All I did was toss and turn. Yeah, I think we're all the same. I'm so exhausted, I can hardly keep my eyes open. So, I'm trying to see him. What do you mean, Toby? I'm trying to see his face, but I can't. I'm trying to remember something. I don't know. Toby, listen to me. It's just a shock. It was a horrible, horrible thing. Sure, Toby, you're just upset, that's all. I mean, everything's turned around. In a couple of days, you'll have it. He's in your heart, right now, waiting. I remember. I knew what it was. When everything else grows hazy, try to hold on to this good thing. It's kind of chilly out here, Champ. You sure you want to do this? Uh, come on, Dad. This is going to be great. We're going to have to see this. Yeah, that's terrific, Ace. I like it out here at night. Mr. Bendison said, there's nothing at night we have to be scared of. There's 